Polysystem Theory Pioneered by Israeli linguist Itamar Ibn Zohar in the 1970s, Ibn Zohar thinks that all literary relational phenomena should not be regarded as isolated but should be put into a network. Itamar Ibn Zohar, an Israeli linguist, introduced the idea in the 1970s that literary relational phenomena shouldn't be viewed in isolation but rather as interconnected elements with a network. This approach emphasizes the interdependence and influence of various literary components on each other, promoting holistic understanding of literature. Certainly, Itamar even Zohar, literary relation network Theory suggests that elements in literature such as text, genre, and cultural context are not independent entities but rather form a complex web of relationship. He argues that understanding this relational connection is a crucial for a comprehensive analysis of literary phenomena. This approach encourages scholars aspect uh, aspect that in integrate links between different aspects of literature contributing to a richer and more nounced interpretation of, interpretation of literary works and their culture significance polysystem refers to a layered collection of interrelated orders that change and mutate as they interact with, with each other. The concept of polysystem coined by Itamar Ibn Zohar refers to a layered collection of interrelated orders within a cultural system. These orders represent within a various elements like literary genres, languages, and cultural context. The key idea is that these layers are dynamic, constantly changing and muting as they interact with each other. The polysystem theory emphasizes the fluid and evolving nature of cultural phenomena, acknowledging that the relationship and influences between different components are not fixed but undergo transformations over time. This approach is particularly useful for understanding the complex dynamics within literary and cultural system. The term polysystem, recognizing the dynamic nature of these interrelated orders, the polysystem theory provides a framework for understanding how cultural and literary phenomena evolve over time. It encourages scholars to examine the intricate relationship between the ex between different elements within a cultural system shedding light on the mechanism that shape the development and reception of literature within a given socio-cultural context in essence polysystem theory offers a nouns and comprehensive perspective on the dynamic nature of culture production and reception in simple terms, this theory of framework within translation studies that focuses on the relationship between different literary and cultural systems in the process of translation. This study explores how translation involves navigating the connections between various literary and cultural systems. It delves into how meaning and context from one language and culture are transferred to another during the translation process. Certainly, the theory you're referring to in translation study is likely to be the um, cultural translation theory. This framework goes beyond the linguistic aspects of translation and delves into the intricate relationship between different literary and cultural system. In essence, it recognizes that translation is not merely a linguistic exchange but a complex interplay of cultural nouns and expressions. Cultural translation theory explores how translators grapple with convey conveying not just words but the broader cultural context, references and values inherent in the source 
it highlights the challenges of bridging diverse cultural landscapes and emphasizes the effective translation goes beyond literal, literal language conversion, requiring a deep understanding of cultural underpinnings of both of source and the target language. This perspective acknowledges that cultures shape language and meaning, influencing the way ideas are expressed and thus play a vital role in the dynamic process of translation. So after delving into the meaning of polysystem theory, let us now look into an example. So try imagining the Philippines with a dominant literary system, which is romance, and another only in a surface level political criticism. Even when there is a dominant and non-dominant um, literary system present, they will still coexist and may overlap with one another. A great representation of this is the romance novel entitled Picada Setenta by Lualhati Bautista. So it is a novel revolving around a middle class family in the time of martial law. It tackles about romance and as well as political criticism. So even when uh, the genre of the book is mainly about romance, um, the cultural aspect and the situation in that time, which is martial law, still affected the, um, the setting or uh, the plot of the story. Moving forward, let us now look into the importance of polysystem theory. So first on the list is contextual understanding. It means that the polysystem theory emphasizes the importance of considering the broader literary system in which translation occurs under social, cultural, and historical context. So it simply means that as a translator, it is our job to be critical and find importance in considering uh, the social, cultural, and historical context of the original text. It is to ensure that our um, translated text or the translated text that we produce uh, justifies uh, the message of the author or the writer. So second is power dynamics. So this theory highlights how translations can influence dynamic literary systems, either to reinforce or to challenge the dominance of certain systems. By analyzing these factors, translators and scholars can critically examine the impact of translations on cultural representation and the visibility of marginalized voices. So it means that as translators, it is important to know about the power dynamics because translations um, hold great power and how we deliver uh, the translated text or how we translate the original text to our audience is critical to change the minds of the audience. It is also to um, empower cultural representation and to make uh, the marginalized voices be heard and be visible to the audience. Next is norms and conventions. So through understanding norms present in the society, translators can navigate the expectations of the target system and make informed choices regarding style, language, and adaptation. So simply put, this just means that as translators, it is critical and important to know about um, the norms and conventions or um, the slangs we use in language or the style more preferable by the audience to be able to project and to tell the message more coherently to the audience. Fourth is influence and adaptation. So the theory acknowledges that translation can serve as a means of influence between literary systems. By examining the processes of influence and adaptation, translators can better understand the complexities of transferring meaning across languages and cultures. It means that um, polysystems are interconnected with one another, various literary systems are interconnected with one another, um, it is an advantage because um, one literary system may affect or influence the other literary system. So there would be an exchange of influence and adaptation towards the translated text 
or the original text. Lastly, we have intertextuality and cultural exchange. The polysystem theory highlights the intertextual connections and cultural exchange facilitated by translations. As highlighted by the polysystem theory, this means that aspects and characteristics of another literary system may affect or influence other literary systems as well. Being with it as an interconnectivity of literary systems, there is also a great possibility that cultural exchange may take place as translations are being made. As translators, this theory emphasizes the power translation holds as it may make or break the efficacy and accuracy of the original text created by the writer. Thus, we must always seek only but the best and absolute translation of a text to honor the writer's truest intent. within a larger literary context. It helps translators, researchers, and scholars to navigate the complexities of translation, considering power dynamics, and critically assess the impact of translations on cultural representation and literary development. So now, let us now talk about uh, Gideon and descriptive translation studies. Gideon and Descriptive Translation Studies Descriptive Translation Theory is a theoretical framework in translation studies developed by Gideon Tauri, an Israeli translation scholar. He believed that translation is a form of social behavior that is influenced by factors such as translators' own background and the expectations of the target audience. So in this slide, Gideon Tauri is an Israeli translation scholar and also a professor who developed the descriptive translation theory, who played a vital role in this discipline, but unfortunately, he passed away on October 4, 2016, at the age of 74. His theory based on emphasizes the importance of understanding translation as a process of intercultural communication rather than simply comparing the source and target text. Focuses on describing, understanding, and explaining the regulatories and patterns in translation phenomena. Emphasizes the importance of analyzing translation as a product of social and cultural context. Translation should be studied in relation to the norms, values, and expectations of the target culture. Simplified, it means stories work focuses on understanding translation as it's rather than how it should be. So in this slide, descriptive translation theory is also emphasizes the role of the translator as a mediator between cultures. Translators make choices and adaptations based on their understanding of the source text in the target culture aiming to produce a text that is both faithful to the original and meaningful to the target audience. Descriptive translation theory recognizes that translations are not mere replicas of the source text, but rather creative and dynamic acts of communication. Overall, descriptive translation theory provides a framework for studying and understanding translations as a complex and multifaceted phenomenon considering the cultural, social, and historical factors that shape the translation process. According to Gideon Tori, a prominent translation theorist, there are three levels of analysis in translation studies. First is the product level. This level of analysis is concerned with the final product of the translation process and aims to identify the characteristic of the translated text that distinguish it from the source text. For instance, when analyzing a translated text at the product level, one might examine the translation's grammar, vocabulary, 
syntax, and other linguistic features to determine how the translator has rendered the source text in the, into the target language. So let's proceed to the second level of analysis, which is the process level. So this level of analysis is concerned with the translation process or the process itself rather than the final product. This level of analysis aims to identify the strategies and techniques that translators use to produce translation and the factors that influence their decisions. For instance, when analyzing a translation at the process level, one might examine the translator's working methods such as their use of translator's memory software or their collaboration with other translators. Similarly, one might analyze the translator's decision-making processes such as their choice of translation strategies or their adaptation of the source text to the target culture. And lastly, which is the system level of analysis. So according to Gideon Tori, um, the system level of analysis is concerned with a broader social, cultural, and institutional factors that influence translation process and the role of translator in society. For instance, when analyzing translation at the system level, one might examine the political, economic, and cultural context in which translations are produced and consumed.